Hey everyone, j Lights here. And today we have a newer collector, a YouTuber, a good friend of mine. We have Ford Guy James. And today we'll be discussing a little bit about how he got started and advice that he has for newer collectors since he just started back in 2021. James, welcome. Glad, glad to have you, man. Glad to have you too. As we talk today, the theme of today will be newer collectors and also kind of focused on the YouTube realm because that's where, let's face it, that's where a lot of newer collectors go to get information. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in collecting and exactly how long you've been collecting for. This was uh, one of my first ones. Tell, tell us a little bit about that Zippo there. It's a 2005 Harley Davidson. I found out at my local jewelry place and, and just, you know, just found my niche and then started, you know, doing 25 years of my life in Zippos. As far as what, uh, what you look for, say, if you go back to that jewelry place, are you looking for any specific type of Zippos or are you just looking for anything that catch your eye? Anything that catches my eye and just, you know, the oddities. Do you have any any more of oddities or good uh, 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 Zippos actually, that you like to share? Yeah. I have a college one that I found off of eBay that was uh, for Jamestown Community College in New York that had celebrated its 50 years back in 2000. And it came with a 70s insert of all things. Oh, wow. So what year was the Zippo again? 2000 2000 and had a 70 insert was it a new insert nope used a heck <laughs> see see uh as i say uh they've seen more fire than hell itself <laughs> well, that, uh, that's why I went, whenever i go like antiquing or something like that you know somebody to have a just your basic chrome. And even though it might be from fifties or the sixties and uh, they'll be asking like for $120, something ridiculous. And my question is, yeah. I mean, why? I mean, that's, well, it still works. Well, it's supposed to, it, it's a Zippo. I mean, there you go. What type of content as a newer collector do you like to see? Uh, just like to see, you know, informational type of stuff, you know, where people, you know, can see with with Zippos, you know, how long they last, depending on what's on it, whether it's standard chrome printed engraved, you know, the whole nine yards. So as uh, you know, you recently also started creating content. So what is your goal to share with those new collectors as well? Just some of the newer Zippos I picked up and then even started creating a custom that, you know, blew up not too long ago. Tell us about, you, you've customized. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, just went around the stippling on the Zippo itself. Went around with it like he does and just did it a lot smaller. Yeah. So now stippling, you know, I've, for, for those who may not know, can you describe that process? Uh, it's where you go around with a Dremel tool and uh, and just remove metal essentially around stuff like even Hot Wheels rivets, like that type of thing. And it okay. just leaves brass instead of, you know, your normal chrome, as you can see. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> And so now I, I will throw in a disclaimer, you know, I'm all for customizing Zippos and, you know, there's a very, that can be a very heated conversation for some, uh, if it's for personal uses or gifts or anything like that, hey, I'm, you know, that's, I think that's the beauty of Zippos is you can pretty much do anything you want with them, just the material, yep. the brass that they're made out of. Uh, however, I am a firm believer that you are a scumbag if you put little pasties or oh, God. icons on yeah. Zippos and try to 
uh, pawn them off as authentic. You know, like you'll have the Disney pins or the Batman pins. And- oh God, yeah, you you told me about this, and they've gone into long debates. And I even did one to my own that I had a disclaimer in my own video to explain that it didn't come that way. And I even have the original one uh, that it came on. Yeah. Yeah, pins like that. I mean, they'll buy a $15 Zippo and a $2 pin, shove it on there and sell it for 50 plus dollars. I mean, I've seen some of them Batman ones. Um, they go, you know, they went for like $150, $200 and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and, it's um, just Asian market just buying it up, which is depressing, you know, for people that don't know. And it's like, it would be nice, you know, just educate the community and it's like show that it's like there's different stuff that you can have and you know not spend a you know crap ton of money for just something that's just fifteen dollars normally and just jacking it up yeah is there any advice that you have for newer collectors on what they should focus on when collecting or what not to focus on always look at the pictures when you're looking to buy them because sometimes the bottom stamp will be a dead giveaway depending on the age and whether or not they're still making that stuff like Coke, Disney, because Disney and Coke, they both dissolved in the, I think the 80s for Disney and then like the 90s and 2000s. I know they had licenses for for those uh, businesses back in the eighties and early nineties. I'm not quite sure when they ceased, yeah. but, but yeah, if you have a, if you see a 2020 Zippo with a Coca-Cola icon on it, it is, um, I have like a 2018 Coca-Cola emblem that I bought in a lot. Uh, so, but if I, if I ever do sell that one, I'm going to make it vividly clear that it is a customized pin uh that way to prevent anyone from you know they'll, they'll bid on what they think it's worth but at the same time you know i'm not going to advertise it as an authentic coca-cola zippo yeah when it's clearly not correct so, so talking about new collectors uh, as well it appears you, you have a Zippo display behind you and it appears to be full. So can you tell us, you know, what have, what other neat pieces have you acquired since that first Harley Davidson lighter that you just showed us? On Facebook marketplace, I found a 1954 uh, pen fruit Zippo that was listed as a 58. And I mean, it was for 138, but it was something you don't see every day in the Zippo community. And besides that, got an employee Zippo. Those are always cool. Yep. Where, where did you get that one at? eBay. The auction did not, uh, nothing bid it on it. So I paid the purchase price plus shipping and paid only $40 and 66 cents. Nice. Oh. And uh, so what, uh, what other like themes or are there any specific thing that you are, uh, that your Zippos are, are, that are in your display or are they just wh- whatever piques your interest? Whatever piques my interest and, and, you know, whatever floats my boat, to be honest. Yeah. Which is, you know, perfectly fine. You know, there are collectors out there who specific, you know, as y'all have seen, uh, in some of these interviews, you've had those who focus on World War II lighters, those that focus on uh, the vintage, or you know, uh, think uh, my uh, Andreas, he focuses on the box top Zippos, and um, so yeah, I mean that's everyone has their niche, right? Yeah, and that's that's what Zippo collecting. Uh, I enjoy seeing all those different types of the diversity. Uh, in the the world of Zippos. So, uh, well, as we wrap up, we I, I like to do this thing with all the collectors I have on here called the burning questions, you know, questions that are asked in the Zippo community on a daily basis. Uh, and I mean, I'm talking every single week where I see this question, these questions pop up. So 
First off, do you smoke? Yep. I do not. And I just light people's cigarettes and just provide the lighter for them to use. Yep. Well, that's that. You never know when you'll need some fire. Uh, so what about as a new collector, this will be interesting as well. What about orange stickers? If you get a new Zippo, do you remove that orange sticker or not? On most of them, I do. But on like a few of them, I've just kept it just for, you know, just for shits and giggles, to be honest. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that is probably one of the biggest debates is to remove that orange sticker or not. I'm a big advocate for removing not only the sticker, but the flint, flint as well. Huh? For, for flints as well, because Dependable Flame bought one from the Lighter Museum. And you'll see how bad the flint degraded or exploded like it looked like powder. <laughs> it's Yeah, that's exactly. I, I have a bunch in my repair kit right there. And uh, it, so if you don't know, it takes, um, I've been able to dial down to about 20 years. So um, any flints that, you know, from two th early 2000s, they're probably disintegrated. So yeah. uh, I, uh, I went through my collection about two years ago and, you know, I was at first I was like, no, don't don't remove those orange stickers. And then I learned the damage that you could do uh, by leaving them on. So I was able to dial down to about 20 years is when they start to disintegrate. So uh, pre yeah. pretty interesting. Well, James, thank you. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day and uh, tell, talking to us a little bit about YouTube, newer collectors, uh, and things that pique your interest. Go ahead. Link is in the description below to Ford Guy James' YouTube page. He has some cool content on there. And also check out the other interviews that we have on there. Uh, the most recent has been George, a World War II expert. We've also had Andreas from Germany overseas and how to properly ship Zippos overseas into Europe and Germany. And then also Bill Calkins, our first, uh, our first interview uh, that we had on this channel. So check those out, check James out, and uh, also support your fellow YouTubers. They do, uh, they put a, a lot of hard work into their videos and, you know, there are collectors out there from newer collectors to vintage collectors to all sorts of Zippos. So let us know in the comments uh, what you want to see next. This is JR Lights. We'll see you on the next one.